this is Juana speaking now. I'm a senior consultant in Definience, and today, today I would like to show you how, or some of the details, how e cognition works with a native um, LiDAR data in the last form. So uh, first thing uh, to note is that uh, you can load uh, native uh, LiDAR data in last format directly into eCognition. So at the moment we support um, last format point, uh, 1.11 and 1.2. So once you have your uh, point clouds loader loaded into eCognition, you can make use of one of the big advantages of eCognition, which is the use of context for image analysis. And of course, like in any other uh, eCognition project, um, you can add any other um, raster or vector data set to your project. So with that, you can combine point clouds, raster data sets, and vector layers for classifying your areas. And once you have uh, the classification done, uh, we come to the export, and here we also offer different possibilities. So um, um, one of the export possibilities you have is just to export the classification you have done directly into the original uh, point cloud. So it means no extra file is exported. Just um, you just um, add the classification to the um, points in the point cloud you loaded into your project. You can, of course, also create a new point cloud with the classified points, or you can use any other of the uh, standard exports of recognition, which could be any raster format export or um, also export to vector um, layers. So um, in this slide, what we see is the um, first step uh, uh, that happens when a point cloud is loaded into a cognition. So the first step is a rasterization of the uh, point cloud and automatically a um, raster representing the intensity of the points is going to be displayed. And then the user, the user can choose uh, which other rasters uh, he creates out of the point cloud. So uh, the user can then decide to create a uh, last return elevation raster. So all the uh, points will be rasterized using the elevation. And um, you could also combine different uh, return types just to create, for example, a first return elevation layer. So you can create as many layers as you want, and all layers will be added to your project. And then you can use all those layers to do the segmentation, classification, and so on. So here we see in more detail a um, uh, point cloud loaded into a cognition. So in the left image, you see that this uh, point cloud has been loaded at a very high resolution. And what happens here is that all the pixels or the cells in which no points are available are represented in black. So they are uh, no data areas or also holes can be named. And these um, images can be hardly uh, segmented in a meaningful way. So uh, before working with these images, what we normally do is apply a um, holes or no data uh, filling algorithm, which is object-based, and also using context. And the result of this um, object fill, um, holes filling algorithm is the image you can see in the right side. So uh, you can uh, see the uh, difference uh, very uh, clearly here. So uh, now, from now on, working with the uh, image in the uh, right side is easier and uh, more meaningful than working in the, uh, with the um, image that was um, directly rasterized by the software. So here we see um, um, two images. The one in the uh, left side has been, um, this is a, ra a raster representation of a point cloud which has been um, interpolated by a generic uh, triangulation uh, method. And in the right side you see uh, the same image which has been imported into cognition. And we have filled now here the holes using this object-based uh, holes filling algorithm. And you can see in the uh, 
in these areas here that um, those spike points uh, cause these uh, ramping effects in the uh, water areas uh, mainly, while in the uh, e-cognition version of the image, uh, those areas remain homogeneous. So uh, working now, segmenting the image uh, from the right side will be will uh, deliver a better, much better results than segmenting the image with those uh, ramping effects. So here's some uh, sample results of a uh, um, point cloud classified image in the cognition. So what we see in red are all the elevated objects, so what we would consider not ground. And the dark outlines represent the objects we have generated after the um, segmentation in the cognition. And the rest of the areas will be classified as ground. And now we see here the same image, the same area, but now we have represented here the uh, point cloud in uh, 3D and we have displayed in orange all the points that were classified as ground and green will be the, the elevated objects. So you see this is a um, display of the point cloud uh, directly in uh, um, external software and in the uh, background image what you, you see uh, what uh, is the uh, surface model uh, that has been created out of the ground classified points. So um, in this um, image you see um, the ground with all the uh, houses, vegetation and other elevated objects. And um, this is my last slide, so here I just would like to uh, summarize um, all the advantages of working with LiDAR, uh, with the cognition and LiDAR. So first of all, um, when you work with the cognition and LiDAR, you can of course make uh, use of the advantages of our client-server architecture. So you can not only do batch processing, uh, apply batch processing to LiDAR uh, data, but also do parallel processing. So it means if you have multiple CPUs available uh, and you have to process um, large uh, data sets, then you can do it um, in a very, very uh, efficient way. So um, we have applied um, our uh, first rule sets over very large uh, data sets in a very robust way, and it means that it was done in a fully automatic way. We didn't need to uh, change any parameter of the rule set and we uh, had a very large data set uh, that um, comprised uh, building areas, um, built up areas and vegetation areas and high slopes areas. But if you work in uh, very concrete environments and you want to, work, to get very accurate results, then the rule set has some, uh, has, have, has some uh, parameters that you can change and this way you can improve the accuracy for those concrete areas you work on. Like, for example, if you work only on the um, areas with very high slopes, then uh, you can tweak the rule set and you get more accurate results for those areas. The same if you work only in built-up areas. And as we pointed out before, uh, you can, of course, add at any time in your analysis um, any complementary data like with the aerial photographies or vector layers. So until now we have been talking mainly about ground, not ground classification of LiDAR data. So this uh, would be the basis for um, extending uh, your um, analysis with other classes like high-low vegetation, buildings, power lines, impervious surfaces, or doing some uh, water flattening. 